Hi, is this Marley Shelton and Michael Grazade? Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? Very Great. well, thank you. How are you doing? I am having a fabulous life, and I hope the same for you guys. I want to tell my audience that I have the opportunity today to speak to Marley Shelton and Michael Grazade. They've got a great new Lifetime uh, series coming for you. Welcome, guys. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Well, I want to talk about the lottery. And if you don't mind, I'll start with Marley. Women are always first in my world. Absolutely. <laughs> always in my world, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for agreeing, Michael. Marley, tell us about the Lifetime series lottery. I'm so excited, but I want you to tell me. Oh, I'm so glad you're excited. I'm excited, too. Uh, well, the lottery is set 10 years in the future. It's a dystopian thriller, which means it's the world is in a state of crisis because we are unable to have children. The last kids born, the youngest kids on the planet are six years old. So for six years, no one's had a child. And my character, Dr. Allison Lennon, miraculously manages to fertilize 100 human embryos. So this is a huge breakthrough and could solve this fertility crisis for the planet. But I'm immediately kicked off my own project and it's taken over by the government. And from there, all sorts of crazy agendas and secret plots ensue while people try to get control of these embryos. And I try to get my job back. And Michael over here plays the father of one of these six-year-old children. So he is the man of the hour. Everyone wants a piece of him and his son uh, because I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Every, I like that too. <laughs> because um, because the, these young, these six-year-olds are so valuable to the human race. They're the youngest children on the planet. Well, let me switch to Michael. Okay, Michael, t give me just a little piece of your role, and because uh, I want to go back to Marley after this. Okay. Um, my role in the lottery, I play Kyle Walker, uh, who is a recovered alcoholic. And I have one of the youngest and last children born in the world. So clearly, you know, the government kind of takes an interest in my life and my child's life and his welfare. And, you know, it puts my character at odds with a lot of people. And I'm under a lot of scrutiny. Do you think this could really happen, Michael? Do I think it could really happen? I, I think that that is one of the points that kind of makes us relatable to uh, a broad audience. Um, it's absolutely something that, that I feel like could happen, you know, down down the road. We've already got a lot of the Big Brother stuff going on, you know, and, and since it is a government uh, conspiracy thriller or whatnot, we, we feel technology watching us every day. And then as far as people not being able to have children, like we don't, we don't know what agents are in, are in our environment or, you know, what, what we're, bodies are taking in on a, on a constant daily basis. That's so, very yeah, true. It's scary. It's a scary thing. That's what makes it interesting as well, you know? Okay. I, that's true. Marla, let me ask you, is this the first series of this kind on Lifetime? It is. It is. We are so excited to be part of this, this new Lifetime brand. Um, we're, we're like Project Zero, 1.1. <laughs> I don't know how you say that. But no, it's, it's a, new, a new direction that that Lifetime is going in, and uh, we're hoping to reach a broader audience and just really kind of probe some very interesting subject matters. Um, this show, it's, it's almost impossible to, to talk about this show and, and get it down to one concise sentence because there's so much in it and to it. It's, it's got it all. It's, it's, it's really entertaining on, you know, on top of probing all these amazing you know, head spinning subject matters like the future of the world and fertility and rights to your own body. And, you know, it, but on top of it, it's it's, you know, there's intrigue, there's a ticking clock, there's suspense, there's romance. And then uh, there's you. you. Have, <laughs> there's you, and Michael. Hey, what can you do? No. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really excited for it. And um, I hope I hope the audiences come along for the ride. When are, you, when are we gonna watch you? Tell me when do we start watching? This Sunday, July 20th at 10 p.m. on Lifetime. Okay, guys, we're there. You've got us, you've Woo! got us hooked. Woo! Thank you've you. got all Thank of my you. audience hooked, so we're there to support you, so please. Thank you for hey, being there. just we'll wait for us that. to tune in. Thanks so uh, very great. much. Thank you, Marley Shelton and Michael Grossaday. I really appreciate being you being on the Belder BB Show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hi. 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 
Hey, this is Valder Beebe in Dallas, Texas on the Valder Beebe Show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Who do I have with me today? Uh, Chad Scott. Julia okay. Stanley Metz with Mango Salsa. Okay. All right, then. So you guys are the almost winners? Almost, yeah. if you get out there and vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, hey, tell me, uh, who will I be talking to? Uh, okay, who did the mango salsa? Uh, my name is Julia Stanley Metz, and I came up with the idea. I'm a, a mother of two, and during the school year, we have Taco Tuesdays, and we get together and cook, and my husband makes the most amazing mango salsa. I could just eat it for days. It tastes great on everything, and I thought, why not on a chip? Because chips and salsa are already meant to be together, so it was a good match. Well, I see it's a good match because we've got mango salsa and your name on the bag. Yeah, Congratulations. I know. My picture on it, it's pretty I, wild. I <laughs> know. Aren't you feeling special? I don't blame you. <laughs> and, Chad, let me ask you about these cappuccinos. Yeah. Um, the cappuccino chips, they were inspired by my love of coffee. I love pretty much all things coffee and drink a lot of it. So cappuccinos are sort of a way to distinguish you know, that, that from the coffee of every day. And uh, yeah, just really excited about the chip. I thought they come out really well and uh, pretty happy. Okay, so we're gonna get to vote who is the best in Lays. Tell me about that. Well, you can go to the website, um, dousaflavor.com. Um, voting begins on July 28th. So everyone can go directly to that website and um, choose your avenue to vote. There are several ways you can vote, but the most important thing is to go to dousaflavor.com and put your vote out there. Okay, Chad, let me ask you this. Well, you didn't tell me how you came up with yours, did you? Um, you love yeah, coffee, you said. Yeah, mine, mine just uh, come from my love of coffee. I, uh, as a graduate student and now as a university faculty, I spend a lot of time reading and writing in coffee shops. So, you know, I'm, I'm there a lot and, uh, you know, I drink a lot of coffee while I'm there. So I just thought, hey, you know, this would be good as a chip. So when the contest came around, I, uh, and that's what I entered it for the contest. And, yeah. That's, that's okay, so we're going to vote to see who's going to win the million dollar grand prize? Right. Right. Yeah. America votes. America votes. Okay. And so what are you guys going to do if you win? <laughs> Tell me that real quick. Well, I know that um, if I win, um, if everyone votes for Mango Salsa, I'm going to just give to as many people as I possibly can. I know it's not how rich you are, but how you enrich the lives of others. And I just want to take care of a lot of people, and especially my mom, who is my best friend, and always takes care of other people, and now it's my turn to take care of her. Okay, and Chad, if you win? Um, there, there's a few things I want to do. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to help take care of my mom. I uh, want to help her purchase a home. And uh, her, her dream is to finish college because she hadn't quite finished that yet. So it's to do that. And then, you know, I'm going to have to uh, get an amazing uh, espresso machine. But <laughs> one thing that I'll be really looking forward to, it's returning back to Texas to attend a few Aggie football games. So... All right, then. Go Texas. Yeah, we like that. And then we'll have one of you guys being the winner. Thank you guys so very much for talking about this. Want to let you know we had a snack off yesterday. We didn't pronounce the winner because we're going to vote also. But I have to say, Chad, you're leading. And Julia, you're a close second. There are actually two other, um, two other finalists here today. Um, there's wasabi ginger and um, cheddar bacon mac and cheese. So there's four different flavors. So America has a lot of different choices, and it's going to be a really hard decision because they're all great. That's right. And the kettle corn is a wasabi ginger. Yes. And what is that, Miko? Mieko. Mieko. And the bacon and mac and cheese, that's Matt Allen. Tell him hi. Tell him thank you so very much. And we will be voting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is me. How are you? Can I still call you Stone Cold? You can call me Stone Cold or you can call me Steve, whatever you want. I like Stone Cold. That's so cool. That is so, so very cool. I can well, roll with it. I want to let you know, I talked to you a couple years ago, and you were a satellite, 
you got the most hits on my site. I had, I think you had like 170,000 or something like that, and that's real big for me. <laughs> <laughs> People really like you. I don't know why, but I'm glad they do. I think because you're authentic. I, yeah. really, I really believe that is what it is. I've never seen you out of uh, not being what I know to be Steve Austin when I see you in the media. So I think you're authentic. That's what we like about people. I think that's the best way to be in life. I don't want to be anybody that I am not. All right. So they told me you love the smell of combat in the morning. Tell me what that means, Steve Austin. I tell you what, uh, you know, I had a great time. I created this show. It's called the Broken Skull Challenge. And uh, you know, I've hosted a lot of reality television shows in the past that were competitive in nature. Uh, but I wanted something where performance talked and BS walked. I wanted to do something because I'm a competitive person. Through anything I've ever done, I like to be number one. So I wanted to set the table each week at my ranch, the Broken Skull Ranch, to bring 80 lead athletes and let them compete. And if you win, you stick around. If you lose, you go home. At the end of the day, after eight people are there, one person is left standing. The next day, that one person will take on my personal obstacle course, which I named the Skull Buster. And when you run the Skull Buster, whether you're a man or you're a woman, it attacks different parts of the body. And then after it attacks parts of the body, it starts creeping up in your mind and makes you doubt yourself. If you're tough enough to beat my course, I will give you $10,000. If someone has already beaten the course, if you beat their time, I will give you their $10,000, and you become my returning champion. This show was all about me setting the table for the elite athletes from the world of CrossFit, Tough Mudder, Spartan Races, MMA, pro wrestling, pro football, to come and be the stars. I set the table. They perform and kick ass. So they just got to be an elite athlete in any sport. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, and, and most of these people are competitive people. Whether it was the men or the women, they all love to challenge. They're alpha males and alpha females, and it's put up or shut up. Well, I like this because, it, you know, it makes more sense than just running that little marathon to the end of the line. You're I like exactly this. right. And, and you got head-to-head -head competition. There's not another show on television that's like this. There's nothing fancy about the show. The competition is tough. The challenges are tough. And we weed through the weak, and we find the strong. And when I say strong, I don't mean just like you got to be physically strong, physically fit, have strength, endurance, stamina. But you also need heart, and you need to have a lot of mental toughness. Because if you don't have mental toughness, you will not survive. Okay, you're on CMT. Where's your ranch? Tell me. Could you tell me what state it's in? Because see, if it was in Texas, you'd probably lose a lot of people. So where's your ranch? Well, the ranch, my ranch is in, uh, Broken Skull Ranch is in South Texas. Now, oh, for no, for, it is. It's yeah. hot in Texas, Steve. Oh, it's hot in Texas. And everything that grows out there has a thorn on it. It will cut you, stick you, or hurt you. It's the toughest ranch in Texas. Oh, wow, that's going to be so challenging. Now, this is a true challenge. So is this really making reality TV, reality TV? Now, this is about as real as it gets. And, you know, when the people come, you can train, and you can be a CrossFitter, and you can train specifically for any uh, your specific activity that you love. But once you come to the Broken Skull Challenge, I'm throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink. You never know exactly what you're doing until you roll up on that situation. Then all of a sudden, if you're that one person who has lasted three rounds and we're standing on the top of a cliff and you're looking down at the skull buster and it looks like one thing, but when you get in the middle of it and you're trying to accomplish each obstacle along the way, it's tough as nails. So it's a tough task for tough-minded people with physical skills and mental toughness. Okay, I just got to cheat just a little bit because I want to know what are some of the obstacles that you have on the court? Can you give me a sneak peek? Well, I just say, you know, you, you, you might uh, need some uh, uh, ability in climbing a rope. You, you might need to jump over a wall. You, you might need to traverse uh, down a winding path with heavy objects. Uh, there, there's all kinds of things. Everything but the kitchen sink is what I throw at these athletes, and that's what they get. I'll tell you what, I've had some of the best athletes in the United States of America, and at the end of the day, look me right in the eye, whether it's a man or a woman, and say, that was badass. And that's when I know I was successful in creating a tough show for tough people. I can't wait. You think you're going to have any of your former wrestling buddies on there? Someone asked that the other day. They said, out of the WWE roster, who might be able to get through the Skullbuster? And I said, Seth Rollins, because he has a CrossFit background, 
and also Antonio Cesaro because he's just a supreme badass athlete. So it would be great to have the WWE superstars come run through around at the Broken Skull Challenge. That would be cool. Tell us when you want us to watch. We know you're on CMT. When do you want us to watch? Oh, it's, uh, i got a season premiere. It's going to be July 6th, 8 p.m. Eastern. There's going to be a replay at 9 p.m. Eastern. So check it out and set your DVR, too. I can't wait. I'm going to be your vicarious athlete, and I will be watching. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve Austin. I can't wait to see this. This is going to be good. Thank you very much. Hi, Valder. How are you? Hello, Valder. Well, hi, Steve Tahani, and I welcome also to uh, James Bell to the Valder B Show. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, our uh, pleasure. Our pleasure. Mm -hmm. I'd like to let my listening audience know I'm, I'm based in Dallas, but I'm global, so I want them to know that I'm talking with the Hollywood insider, Steve Tahani, and I'm talking <laughs> with GM's general director and one of my favorite guests, James mm -hmm. Bell. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me today. No problem. Good to be here. Okay. Well, James, I know you know everything about cars for GM. So I'm going <laughs> to start with Steve Tahani because he's going to tell us everything about the Transformers movie and how GM intersects with it. Well, Transformers Age of Extinction, first of all, opened to a wonderful weekend box office, which we're thrilled about. Um, you know, very quickly, the film picks up about four years after the destruction of Chicago from the third film. Uh, the Autobots have gone into hiding, but there's a mercenary that's been sent to essentially get rid of the Autobots. And um, from there, um, what happens is that a, a, there's a man-made set of robots that are being created to replace the Autobots, but things don't quite go according to plan. And once again, the Autobots save the day, led by our iconic, heroic Bumblebee character, which is a yellow Camaro. All right, then. People are going to love that. And you're right. I heard it open up. It's opening weekend. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like $100 million? Uh, yes, it was $100 million, which is uh, obviously a great way to kick off the film. And I'm sure Paramount Studios is thrilled, as is Michael Bay and all the producers. So, yeah, a great way to start the uh, summer, really, summer film season. Mm -hmm. It is. James, tell me about your part for GM, because you and I talked a little bit about a previous movie. You had mm -hmm. a GM car there. Tell me about Transform. Well, Transformers, you know, it's a great venue for us to introduce new vehicles or transform, no pun intended, some of our current vehicles. This one here is the um, Chevrolet Sonic, uh, driven and uh, enjoyed by so many American families as a, a comfortable, reliable, uh, fuel-efficient little car. Well, if you look inside here, you're going to see that it's been transformed in a big way. This has now been turned into a, a rally car, if you will. And this is a prop from the film. But I think what it highlights for me is even as a prop, you can see the attention to detail and how far we as General Motors went to make sure that we meet, meet the, the vision and the detail that Michael Bay demands. And I think that's what results in these great $100 million opening weekends. People know that this film is going to be technically correct. So we've introduced um, some very special Sonics in the movie. We also have the Corvette Stingray and a new, a new character by the name of Crosshairs and the Chevrolet Trax. Now the Trax is a small SUV already very uh, successful on sale in Asia, which highlights you know, just how big this Transformers uh, 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 premise is. I mean, it's a global story that people really embrace all around the world. The Chevrolet Trax, uh, big in Asia already and going on sale here in the US later this year. So when you watch the film, you'll be able to see some, some cars that you'll be even able to buy. I will be looking when I go. I'm going this weekend. I'm taking my producer. He's a Transformer. Just, what do you call him, groupie? I think so, yep. <laughs> I got a question. When you have, uh, you've made this kind of merger with the film industry, does it translate into sales for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're trying to, at the higher levels of what are called the purchase funnel, build awareness and obviously opinion and consideration for a product, which in theory should relate down to sales. I mean, you take an example of the Camaro. Uh, I personally believe, and I think the statistics would bear it out, that 
the film property has done a lot to build Camaro, especially when you're trying to get to a younger audience that may not be as familiar with it. And I think film gives you the power to connect with audiences of all ages on a whole different level. And that's really what we use it a lot for. And one little in interesting fact is 70% of the Camaro sold in, in a market like China that James references are yellow. So I have to somehow <laughs> correlate that to what happens in Transformers. They all want to drive Bumblebee. Yeah, exactly. They all want to drive Bumblebee. Let me ask you this, uh, Steve. Um, it seems the Transformers movie has Michael Bay found him a whole new cast. He mm -hmm. uh, no longer Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, and now he's got Mark Wahlberg. Um, what's this doing for the Transformers film, or is the film just standing alone? Well, you know, I, I think you know now that you're on the fourth film. Um, I mean, I can't speak for Michael, but I think the intent was to you know kind of take the franchise to a, a different level. Um, and I think Mark brings a whole different level of kind of star quality to the film. Mm -hmm. And you can start building a, kind of a different set of stories around his character and where that may go, I don't know. But I think, you know, it was time to, you know, probably, I'm, I'm not saying reboot because that's not the right term, but to add a, a little bit of a different element to the film, which I think Mark does, because he really is a bona fide Hollywood, uh, you know, a star. And uh, he brings a, a certain cachet to the film along with obviously all the existing characters and some of the, the new Autobot characters that are in the film as well. So, you know, it just, it's progressing and, and, and an evolutionary process, I think, in the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to do a lot for Detroit, hopefully. You know, it's kind of suffering, and maybe this will help reboot Detroit. We can use reboot there. Steve, let me ask you, where can we find out more information about your opinions on movies? Well, um, my personal, <laughs> it, well, let, let's put it this way. If you want to find out more about some of the behind the scenes things that happen on Transformers, visit Chevy.com. They have a whole culture section. We've got some really interesting content that we've added there. So yeah, have people check it out. I think they'll find it really enjoyable. And James Bell, as we wrap up, I'm sure, where do you want to send us on the web or social media? Uh, follow right into what he's saying, uh, Chevrolet.com. Obviously, this is a very important project for us, and uh, there's some really cool content, some behind-the-scenes uh, videos to watch. Uh, well worth your time. Well, you're having a great job, James Bell. When you, you know, when you relinquish your job, call me. I might want your job. You got <laughs> I want. Well, I want his job. So I think we got a good little partnership going on here. All right. Well, we'll do a rotation amongst <laughs> the three of us. I like. All it. Right. I like it. I love people who love what they do. Thank you so much for being my guest today on the Valder BB Show and talking to my wonderful audience. Thank you, Valder. Thank you for having us. Hi, Valor. Well, hi, Carly Noblock. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Valder BB Show in Dallas, Texas. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, I'd, I'd like to let my audience know that Carly Noblock is a lifestyle technology expert. Today, she's going to talk about her talk tech tip for staying stress-free during summer travel season. Carly, uh, talk to me about this because, you know, um, when I, we went on vacation with my parents, we didn't have phones and tablets and all of those things we just sat back there and were told to be quiet yeah now you got now you got parents with devices kids with devices how they getting along i think it's great because i think there are so many ways for you to be occupied and entertained on the plane i think kids definitely are better behaved when they have something to do because some of those flights are so long that if they aren't, if they don't have any activities, they really do start to go stir crazy. So one of the things that I'm seeing, and I know when my kids were little, we carried these big DVD players on the planes. Now it's all about tablets, which are so much lighter in your carry-on, which is so great. You can pack them with movies and with games, keep the kids occupied, and you can also use them to run full suites of office software so that you can stay productive on the plane as well. Another thing that I'm seeing increasingly is that you can go online on planes, and with a service like Go Go in flight, which is now being offered up to three times faster than it has been in years past. You can connect to the internet and you can surf the web. You can watch, um, you know, videos online. You can uh, be checking your email. And uh, they're on about 2,000 domestic planes right now. By the end of the year, it'll be 100 international.
international planes. So even if you're going to a different country, you'll be able to stay connected while you travel and uh, be in touch with people on the ground. Now, while you're traveling in air, we can stay connected to um, most planes now? Yeah, uh, there's uh, the, the service GoGo in-flight, and that's one of a, a couple different services, but GoGo is one of the biggest, and they have about 2,000 domestic planes that have Wi-Fi connectivity built in. Um, and it's getting faster and faster, and not only um, do they offer that service, but they also offer a service which is great for kids called Text and Talk that allows you to send text messages, SMS messages, just like you would from the ground, from your smartphone, which was a service that previously wasn't available. So not only can you, you know, check your email and surf the web, but you can text from the skies as well. Kids rejoice. Is there, <laughs> is there a best, is there a most used device when uh, families and individuals are traveling this summer? Meaning is it your smartphone, your iPhone, your, your uh, pad, your notebook? You know, what's, it, what's being used the most? Well, I think it really just depends on where you're going and what you're bringing with you. Are you traveling light? Do you have everything under the sun? How long are you staying? So I think a lot of things factor into which is the device. But what's great is that, you know, from our smartphones, we can connect via Wi-Fi. From our tablets, of course, we can. And from our laptops. So whatever device you have um, is a device that can operate just like it does on the ground now with, with these um, online from the air services like GoGo. -Go. As travelers prepare for their summer trips, where's a place can they go and get all this information to be prepared? Yeah, so there's tons of great resources at concourse.gogoair.com. All kinds of articles and tips like these that'll really help you travel in the summer stress-free. Well, Carly Noblock, I've read you in Business Week. I love your travel tips. You are truly the travel expert. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. So good at what you do. Thanks, Felder, for having me. It's my joy. Thank you very much. Valder Beebe Show, a new kind of talk show, right here on Black Premier TV, Monday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m.